this is team 25. Our project is about image segmentation for role detection. My name is Jacqueline Almache. I'm Krisha Giravla. And I'm Keith Williams. The goal of our project is to design a network for image segmentation using raw data. The use of image segmentation allows for an image to be broken up into easily recognizable regions of interest. This can be further applied to tasks such as making maps, object detection, and geographical mon monitoring. We're going to use simplified unit structure with comparable results. We have used a data set that contains 1,100 sets of aerial images and road labeled images. We have split it into 1,050 sets for training and 50 sets for testing. Each image was originally 1,500 by 1,500 pixels, and we have cropped it into sections by 296 by 296 pixel sections. We're comparing to pixel error of units in reference to using biomedical application. The unit had pixel error of 0.0611 and accuracy of 0.9389. The image on the, side, on the right side has an example of the unit using used in reference to. So as mentioned before, our model ar architecture was gonna be based on the unit which is a, which a purely convolutional network. So as you can see on the image on the right, this includes a shrinking side and an expanding side. So we were able, for our model, we were able to lower the total amount of convolutional layers from 18 to 14. And we were also able to use almost half as many uh, trainable filter kernels as the UNAT used. All of our kernels were three by three and all the activations that we used were ReLU, except for the very last one by one convolutional layer, which used a sigmoid activation. We used dropout layers to try to avoid overfitting, and our loss function was the binary cross entropy fun function, since we were comparing between rows or background. For our hyperparameter selection, several of the hyperparameters hyper that we wanted to think about were the number of epochs we would use during training, the learning rate or the optimizer that we would use, the dropout rate during we used during our in our dropout layers, and the activation functions that we were going to use. So the image on the left actually shows us overfitting a model just to see how many epochs it would take to properly train the model. And it was roughly between 20 and 25 epochs to fully train the model without overfitting. We started out trying to use stochastic gradient descent for our learning rate uh, optimizer, but we didn't have meaningful results from that, so we stuck with Atom. So we tested several different dropout rates, and, and we did not see any significant improvement if we used anything higher than 0 0.2, so we just stuck with 0 0.2. And the only reason why we considered looking at any other activation function other than ReLU was that some of our sources used ALU activation functions, spelled E-L-U, instead of ReLU, and we didn't actually see any significant improvement in our model, so we just stuck with ReLU since that's one of the standards. This shows our final training results for the model that we ended up selecting. We were able to achieve just under 96% validation accuracy, and we were also able to avoid overfitting of the data. Now, here we can see our output results. Um, the top row has the original images. The top row has the original images. Um, the middle row has the annotated masks, that is the masks that were um, created um, by human cell. The bottom row has the predicted roads, that is the predictions made by our UNAT model. Now, uh, we got the final pixel error rate as 0 0.042 and an accuracy of 0 0.958.
So if we have to discuss the performance, our baseline was achieved. We got a pixel error rate of 0.042 as compared to 0.0611 with units. So um, the 0.0611 was what was there in the reference tool. The data is skewed towards black background pixel versus white foreground pixels. So what we understand is that our images have more background, that is more black, image more black pixels than white pixels whereas the one in biomedical imaging had um, fewer black pixels and more white pixels which is why which is probably why our pixel error rate was um, lower than the other unit model um, another thing that we observed was that um, roads that are surrounded by grass had better performance than roads that were surrounded by parking lots. We can see that in the images here. The top row has the predicted and the true masks for roads that are surrounded by grass. Whereas the bottom row has the predicted and true masks for the roads that are surrounded by parking lots. And we can see that in the bottom row, the prediction is not as clear as the one in the top row. So our references are a PhD thesis from a PhD thesis called Machine Learning for Aerial Image Labeling. And the second one is um, UNET Convolutional Networks for Biomedical Image Segmentation, which was basically applying UNET for um, image segmentation in biomedical field. Thank you.